Hello everyone and welcome to Quality Old Games. Today we are having another tier list, namely the Frank's roster in Rome Total War Barbarian Invasion. And the tier list is made from campaign perspective, so not based only on unit stats, but also how easy it's to recruit and replenish and so on those units, or rather retrain instead of replenishing. And of course then there are some horde units included in the tier list as well. But let's begin with cavalry. First we have the noble cavalry and um, well they take um, tier 3 stables to get. So basically you need to have tier 4 town. So that's quite heavy requirements and of course they are heavy cavalry but they are not that good in my opinion. It would be rather okay if they were available from tier 2 stables but you need to upgrade the stable twice before getting these guys uh, compared to the getting the raiders. So in battle I think these guys are rather okay but the requirements for them I don't see a reason why to upgrade the stable so much so as to get these guys. So that's why I'm getting or giving these guys high C tier. Then we have the General's Paladin Bodyguard. And of course, as all bodyguard units, they are absolutely great. The only drawback is the small number of uh, bodyguards in one unit but usually they can pretty much take one-on-one -on -one almost everyone in the game so definitely eight here uh, you don't need to recruit them most of them uh, they come with the generals and of course faction leader and factioner has larger body larger bodyguard than the rest of the units and if you have tier four stables you can train the paladin bodyguards but i don't really see the investment to be that good unless you are in a, a dire need of new generals. Then we have paladins and these are interesting units because you can recruit these from the monastery building chain. And of course the drawback here is that you need to turn to Christian or to Christianity to get these guys. But if you do, you will build churches or buildings from church building chain to improve your public order. And then you can unlock the monastery building chain, which will further boost the public order. So basically, I would say that uh, the building requirements for these guys are quite a bit better than to those of the uh, noble uh, riders or whatever they are. And of course the stats of these paladins are much greater. So because of that I think these guys deserve a weak A tier at the very least. And then we have the raider unit, the last cavalry unit uh, from buildings. And I guess a B tier is okay for these guys. So they are not particularly good. But if you have weaker infantry or lower quality infantry, uh, their flanks need to be protected. And since it takes so much to get these nobles or the paladins, you will be stuck with these guys for quite a long time. So... Basically, if you want to have cavalry in addition to the general's bodyguard, especially in early game, you will need these raiders. So basically that's why they are beat here. But don't count on them too much. Against heavy cavalry, they will lose. Against heavy infantry, they will lose. Even some cases if they can use a flanking attack or something like that. So their main function, at least for me, is to screen the main army and hunt down fleeing enemies. Perhaps in some cases I might try to hit enemy 
uh, missile units if they are on the weaker side with these guys. Or perhaps try to flank or circle around some melee infantry line that's already engaged. But um, don't rely on these guys too much in the battle. Then we have the horde units. And this is rather interesting considering this tier list since, of course, the horde mechanic for Franks is quite nice. You have something to fall back into if the game starts badly, but you cannot actually win the game in the horde mode. Uh, so you can get some money, and if you play it skillfully, you can uh, use your horde armies to besiege, for example, several cities at the same time, so that uh, the cities will surrender at the same time. Of course, if the enemy sallies out from one of these cities and you capture it, then the horde mechanic will cease to function and you will find yourself with one city and the horde will be gone. So it's kind of a safety measure in my opinion, but I don't think that if you intend to win the game, uh, you can utilize hordes too much. Or I think something has gone wrong if you have to uh, go to horde mode with Franks. But there are at least some decent units here. So the first are chosen uh, swordsmen, horde chosen swordsmen. And uh, since you get these guys for free, they are stats-wise quite good heavy infantry. So they are A tier, clearly. I'm wondering if they are S tier. Well, they are free, but um, since you shouldn't be getting these guys in the campaign gameplay, so that's why they are dropped to A tier. Then there are Horde Hunters. They are stronger than, for example, Roman Archers, which most likely are some of your main opponents. And um, they are weaker than the normal hunters. And that's the unit, archery unit, that your barbarian neighbors will also have. Nice unit, okay. But um, I'm wondering between B and C tier. But I think that since you shouldn't go to the horde mode, these guys get only a C tier. Then we have Horde Peasants, absolutely D tier, because the main function of Peasants is that you can boost your public order in your cities. So, okay, you get these guys for free, but they will break fast. You do with them pretty much nothing in the battle. So they serve practically no function. Perhaps they can soak up some missiles or something like that, but if they break, in the middle of your army, they actually hinder your army performance as uh, the panic may spread. Then there are Horde Riders. The stats are actually identical, and even the image seems to be rather identical with the actual Raiders. Um, so the same thing applies to them. You get them for free, but since you don't want to go into Horde mode, or at least I don't want to go, so that's why they are placed below those actual raiders. And then we have some horde spearmen. Um, well, yeah, okay, infantry, but um, because I don't want to go to horde mode, they get only place in seat here. Then let's move to the most interesting part of the Frankish roster, excluding the paladins. So here we have X Hirban. And pretty much same thing applies to the infantry as does to the cavalry. So from tier 1 barracks you can get Levi Spearman and you need to have tier 3 barracks to get X Hirban. And from tier 2 barracks you can get only Levi Spearman that have a bit improved experience. So you need, you need to build up the building chain quite a bit before you can get access to these guys. And of course, 
you perhaps you shouldn't build those buildings but capture cities that have those buildings. So what's going for these guys is that they have armor piercing attack. And that's rather nice because the, the, the defense ratings of heavy infantry and heavy cavalry are quite high in the barbarian invasion. But the requirements of getting these guys and they cannot form Oh, actually, they can form a shield wall. That's a bonus too. So I think these guys earn a place in a strong B tier or weak A tier. Decent enough units. And not overly expensive. Let's give them... Well, let's check it out later. But let's put them in weak A tier now. Then there is sword here, Bun. Or rather, oh, I confused. So this is the Francisca Herban, the kind of ultimate unit uh, requiring tier 4 barracks. And the nice thing with these guys is that they have throwing weapons to use before uh, they are engaged in melee. They have armor piercing attacks. Their stats are quite a bit higher compared to the Axe Herban. So because of that they get a place in, let's say, stronger A tier. Really solid unit. However, in order to get them, I think you should be able to capture uh, the city from where you can recruit them. Then we have Levi Spearman. So, tier 1 barracks are enough. Their stats are not that good. They can form a shield wall, they have throwing weapon, and you can practically re uh, retrain them almost anywhere. And at least in my campaign gameplay, I found out that these Levi Spearmen are pretty much anything, everything I need from an infantry. And actually, that's a bit surprising, but... Um, in my opinion, the shield wall is actually pretty good formation for tier 1 unit, especially coupled with uh, the ability to throw missiles before the battle is engaged. So I would argue that these guys are pure S tier. And there is nothing wrong with these guys, but... Um, the requirements for the Levi Spearmen are just so slow that that puts them above these guys here. Then we have peasants. And um, I'm a big fan of peasants. For example, for Western Roman Empire, Eastern Roman Empire, in the Vanilla Roman, em uh, Roman Empire, or Ro Rome Total War campaigns. But here... I think the key to success with Franks is aggressiveness and exterminating cities in order to keep a public order. So you don't need these guys too much to keep up the public order. Of course, there are some cities that are difficult to keep the population happy. So in some cities you end up needing these. And of course their importance will be heightened uh, if the campaign play goes longer. But um, as it is, I think these guys are only for B tier in Frank's campaign. And then we have priests. Once again, you have to opt for Christianity. And um, well, they boost a bit public order, but <clears throat> I made a test about the priest's abilities. The boost is not that great. And, for example, concerning my army and its composition, I would take one unit of levy spearmen over one unit of priests there. Because the uh, morale boosting effect is really not so great with these guys. And then we have the sword hair bun. They image is same as the chosen swordsmen, but the mechanics are quite a bit different. So these can form a shield, uh, shield wall, that's nice, and they can be recruited from tier 3 barracks, same as the Axe Herban. And of course these guys don't have the armor piercing, 
so they are more like to be used to hold the line while these guys do the damage. Of course the sealed wall is nice, but uh, if you are facing a heavily armored opponent, I think the armor piercing trumps over the better stats. And um, especially in late game, that's going to be the case. So... I don't know. Perhaps strong B, uh, strong B tier, weak A tier. Perhaps these guys should be put into strong B tier as well. But I think I will put it this way for now. There is not too much difference between these two guys. And then we have the seeds and missile weapons. And as I have said in previous uh, tier lists, unit tier lists from Rome, I don't really like the siege weapons because they slow down the army. And of course, if you can find a weekly garrison city and you can recruit ballista mercenaries, then you can take it during the same turn. That's nice, always. But in order to make these ballistas, you need to have tier 3 archery building or missile building and uh, I mean you need to have tier 4 city and that's a huge investment unless you get uh, kind of the facilities for from a city you capture so you get them for free so I don't know I don't like these so I will give them D tier and then we have onagers the same applies then to them as to the ballistas. Of course, these are a bit nicer units. They deal more damage, but of course the requir requirement here is tier 4 archery building and tier 5 city, so that the Franks could get them. So, I don't know. The requirements are just too high. Usually in the gameplay, at least I don't have the money to spare some, say, 15 to 20,000 to build up some building chain in order to get siege weapons, which even slow down the army movement. That's not at least uh, my playstyle. So, because of that, absolutely D tier. And then we have the only real missile unit the Franks can make uh, that requires only tier 1 archery building. So the same logic applies to them as to the Levy Spearmen and the Raiders and then the higher tier units. And I found out my, in my campaign gameplay that these guys are pure S tier once again. They are much better than the Horde Hunters. They clearly outperform for example Roman Archers and an army made of levy spearmen and hunters is actually really tough in even the very hard difficulties in the campaign gameplay. So basically the military buildings you need for the campaign, in my opinion, are only tier 1 barracks, tier 1 archery building, perhaps tier 1 stables, and that's pretty much it. At least for me. But of course, during my campaign gameplay, I used quite heavily mercenaries, and I was really aggressive and so on. So perhaps in longer campaigns, these guys here can earn their place properly, but... Well, that's my experience in my campaign. So, what do you think? Would you play some you need somewhere else. Do you disagree or agree with me? Please feel free to share your com uh, ideas in the comment field below. And of course, this is my personal opinion based on my playstyle. Feel free to disagree if, if that's what you think. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the content, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Feel free to post comments, share your opinion and so on. Have a great rest of the day. Quality old games out.